Hello, and welcome to an extremely dark and moody Houses Make Fitting podcast. It's raining again, isn't it, Fox? Yeah. She doesn't mind. She'll go out quite happily in the rain. All of them will, to be honest, apart from Lily. Lily is not keen on the rain or the snow or any kind of inclement weather. But Poppy doesn't care. Rocket doesn't really care. And Rose will sit out in the pouring rain as if it were brilliant sunshine, because Rose is a little bit loopy. Anyway, let's cat catch up and the weather catch up. The weather has been like this really for about two weeks. We get a sunny spell and then these really squally showers that are a little bit trying. Probably by the time we finish recording today, that's a bit better. The sun will be out again, so go figure. Anyway, before I start talking about knitting, I've been asked to clarify something. So last week I spoke about the ads and having, well, I spoke about having monetized the podcast and someone has asked me, could I explain what that means? Because a lot of podcasters say that they've done this, but they don't actually tell you what that means for you and I had another question from one of my favorite viewers um, who had donated some money and didn't know where it had gone so I'm going to clarify all of that now basically when a podcaster says they've monetized the podcast what it means is that having got a thousand subscribers you are allowed to collect some revenue from ads that YouTube put on whether you want them to or not. They will put ads on um, and you have no control over where or when. So one of the reasons I chose to monetize was that for each video, when I upload it, I can say you can put ads on at the beginning, you can put ads on at the end. I do not want any ads playing during the video. So if any ads do come up during the video, that's against what I've said YouTube can do. So that's not down to me, that's them going their own way. Um, The other benefit to it is that you get a tiny bit of revenue from each advert that a viewer watches. So that's the important bit. It has to be watched. If you skip it, it doesn't count. When I say a tiny bit of revenue, it works out to about a quarter of a penny for each advert watched. So to put that into perspective, I have just over a thousand subscribers. If all of you watched one advert, it would get me about £2.50 might be less than a quarter of a penny that's an average so some are less some are a little bit more the other question that often comes up is I for example have got YouTube premium because I don't want to watch the adverts so if you are watching and you have YouTube premium obviously the adverts don't come up but what happens when someone with YouTube premium watches a video if that video is monetized they will get, again, that fraction of a penny um, that they would have got had there been adverts watched. I hope that makes sense. It made sense in my head. I'm not sure it makes sense when it comes out. So I'll watch a video um, that the podcaster has monetized. I don't have to look at any adverts, but they will get a tiny bit of money because I pay for YouTube premium. I hope that clears that up. The other question I was asked about was from the viewer who had donated to the um, Kofi account. So the Kofi account is something entirely separate. It's like a tip jar, essentially an online tip jar. And I think what you're supposed to do is say, if you've enjoyed my content today, why not buy me a coffee? The link is below. That's not really me, as I'm sure you know. 
Um, the link is always below and I never mention it. Very, very rarely. I think I've mentioned it. This is the fourth time I've mentioned it because I don't like asking people to tip me. You know, watch it, don't watch it. I feel like certainly those of you that watch regularly and you comment regularly, I feel like you're my friends and it's not right to ask your friends to tip you, is it? Um, so to answer your question, um, the lady who asked me what had happened to the money she donated, you donated that to my Kofi account, which is an entire, entirely separate thing to YouTube being monetized. That is nothing to do with YouTube at all. That is, as I say, like a tip jar and all the money that was donated during the Ukraine mail went on to postage for prizes. And if I tell you that the postage for the prizes for the Ukraine mail, because everyone had so generously donated things, the postage alone was over £70. And I think your donations paid for all but about £5 of that. So that was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm very, very grateful. And I have put a thank you on Kofi. But obviously, unless you go to Kofi, you won't see that. So now I'm thanking you properly. Thank you for your donations. I'm, I don't know if you can hear that rain. It's the window steaming up and it's not warm in here. So that rain must be freezing. And it's coming straight at the window. So I hope that clears up that. I've wasted six minutes of your time waffling on about that. But I was asked to explain and I hope that does explain if it doesn't just ask again and you know anything that I've not covered just ask and I'll, I'll do my best to explain it so that's that there will be more about Kofi later on keep your ears peeled okay what have I been working on this week very little at the end of my podcast last week I told you about a uh, an appeal the Sun on Sunday were doing for blankets for Ukraine and that is pretty much all I've done for the whole week done a little bit on my shawl actually let me show you the shawl first mainly because I've just done my fingernails and I'm not sure they're 100% dry and I've already done something to one of them you know when you sort of like push the polish up and you get like a little ridge at the end hopeless I'm so unladylike it's just ridiculous so I abandoned the twist and turns and I started knitting this it's an extravaganza I'm not going to go through all my colours and everything every week but this is what I've done this week I've completed the first section and I have loved every single stitch it's been really hard to put this down I don't know that you're going to get the colours terribly well because of the light. Oh, no, that's yeah, that's better. A little bit better. So I think you can just about see the green, the bright green is a Cascade Heritage. That's actually coming out a much better colour than it did last week when it looked like bright emerald green it's not quite that bright still but it is better and the light is terrible you cannot see let me see if I can turn you around a little bit whether that will help well that's a bit better you can see there's a stripe in each of those honeycombs um, and that's from Alex and Danny at my yarny corner that's um, toil and trouble and it's really hard to see because of the light but that is variegated so you can see there's purples and blues um there's even a little bit of tan it's really pretty and that will get showcased a bit better later on right let's turn you back there we go oh she's gone back to sleep nothing interesting happening for miss poppy today sorry i keep wiggling here I'm trying to get the best light and failing, <coughs> excuse me, failing miserably, went down the wrong way. 
Right. So that's my shawlography. Which, as I say, I have done very little on. So I'm going to talk now about a lot of things that I'm intending to cast on. Nobody tell me off. I'm going to try and finish my finish, finish my finish knitting. Finish my Christmas knitting first, even. So, I was looking for the new Stephen West shawl, and I came across this, which is a free pattern, which is why I'm telling you about it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's called Mina. As I say, it was free, and it's by the Mouse Army Mitten Co. So I had to have it, didn't I? <clears throat> the light is very challenging today. The picture on the front of the pattern doesn't give you a terribly clear indication of what it's going to be like, but it's also that shape. And that made me very happy. So I don't know what colours I'm going to do it in, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I wanted to share it with you because it's a free pattern. And I like to try and, and share a free pattern with you. I don't manage to do it every week, but I like to try. The shawl I was looking for, but I was too early because it wasn't released until later in the day, was the new Hiber Knitting Shawl by Stephen West. <clears throat> in the past few years, what he's done is it's a Hiber Knit Along and it starts on the 26th of December, so the day after Christmas Day. And this year, it's this one. The Aurora Cabin Shawl. I don't know if you can see that terribly well at all. I'll see if there's a better picture. And I thought I liked that very much. Let's see if I can find... Oh, that's a bit better. Let me see if I can show you this without... I don't know that is any better, actually. Bear with me while I shuffle pieces of paper. Let's try this one. There we are. Now I think similar to the slip stravaganza, there are a lot of slip stitches in it. Uh, yeah, simple sections of stripes and slip stitches alternate between the multicolour slip stitch sections. You only work one colour at a time. That sounds like perfect knitting after the trials and tribulations of twists and turns. This was exactly what was called for. So, no, I'm, I'm going to show you that later in a different section. I've dyed some yarn towards it, but I'll talk about that later in the yarn dyeing section. I may be going a bit quick today because my friend is coming for lunch and I want to get finished recording before she gets here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make her sit and watch me do this and then I will be far too embarrassed. Do you remember back in the summer? must have been, oh, was it this summer or last summer? But I had the blind open and the lady next door kept walking up the garden after doing her washing and looking at me and I got all peculiar. <sighs> got this all written down and I've gone out of order already. Knitvent. I signed up for Knitvent. Knitvent, I discover, I'd never heard of it before. Um, you pay for your patterns and then one is released every week. This year two are released in one week. I'm presuming they're going to be smaller patterns. Week one was the anthology throw which I'm saving to do with my um, advent my yarn advent week two was a cow and you know cows are my thing at the moment there it is it is called the oddments cow and I have prepared to knit it with eventually this set of mini skeins is designed for mini skeins, which, because of the light, you can't see at all, I'm pretty sure. Oh, 
Oh my word, this is like podcast of Krypton factor today. That's, yeah, now you're getting an idea. So these were kind of a one of a kind set of mini skeins that I bought from Little Mouse House and they're called the bad guys because, turn you back again, because they were skeins that she dyed and they hadn't come out quite right so she over dyed them with black and I mean that is, oh, that is so me, dark variegated and I mean really dark variegated are probably my favourite thing ever. And you can see this greeny one. No, you can't see because it's dark. But this greeny one, love it. And then there's this kind of rainbowy one next to it. If I can figure out how to dye this, I'm going to be dressed to toe, head to toe every day of the year in this kind of yarn. Apart from the days when I feel the need to kind of wear fluorescent colours. And I've just realised I should have mentioned what I was wearing. I am the worst podcaster ever. This is my rocket tee. My rocket tee number four, technically. That I knit back in the summer using... The pink is from Little Lycat Yarns and it was Montague. And I've got a little bit of that I found the other day to go into my friend's habitation throw. It's not for my friend, I'm knitting it with yarn from my friend. The green, Aribark Designs, also got a little bit that's going into my friend's throat. And then the creamy colour is just white mice from Little Mouse House. There we go. Podcaster obligation fulfilled. What's next on my list that I'm completely ignoring? Sure, there was another. There is, but I will talk about that as part of the dying section. Should I do that next? Or, no, I'm going to do the blanket next. Right, I'm going to pause you for a minute because I'm going to have to stand up. Okay. Oh, I thought the door had shut and it hadn't. I've just backed into the edge of the door. So. I started this, no, crocheting, I started crocheting this ages ago and I've done to about there, so that corner there I've done. And then I saw the appeal for blankets for Ukraine, so I fished it back out and I started up again. It's quite large and I've just reached the six foot long eye so that I can start decreasing and fill in the last corner. When it's finished, because it's corner to corner, so I can't actually get far enough away that you can see all of it. When it's finished, I will take a, a picture on, oh gosh, I'm trailing yarn behind me, like I'm being taken to a gingerbread house. Um, yeah, when it's finished, I'll take a picture of it on the floor or something so that you can see the whole thing. But it's all scrap yarns up to... These, these ones were what was left over from my blanket. Um, these ones were left over from a jumper I knitted year before last. This was from Peter's cardigan, if you remember that. That was earlier this year, cabled cardigan. And the rest were just... This first... This is where I began. This first bit was from a cowl that I made and then gave to my friend because I didn't like it. Bless her. It's the same friend that's coming today. She gets all my kind of, yeah, I've made this. You can have it. So that is what I've been working on all week. With short forays into um, 
slip stravaganza and I think I cast on a sock, a, a Christmas present sock. Drag back my table now. Whew. Sorry, I'm having to check my list again. Because I've gone out of order, now I'm having to check that I haven't forgotten anything. Right, the other thing I've been doing is dyeing some yarn. And let me show you what I've got. I was trying this week, oh, it's run away. I was trying to mix some colours. It didn't go terribly well. But first of all, I dyed this one, which is just a really nice dark grey. And I dyed this to make a litmus cowl with these. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. That Dave got me for my birthday. No, you can't see. So they're really bright. There's another orangey pink one that goes in between. But is that going to work? Probably not. I thought they'd be quite a dark grey with just kind of make them pop. Not that they need a lot of help, especially these ones. But I thought that they're going to be broken up by the stripes from the, the dark grey. I thought that would be quite pretty. So I dyed this one. And this one came out um, slightly variegated. It's probably a tonal rather than a, a solid. Nonetheless, I'm very pleased with it and I love the colour. So that one, okay. I also, while I was at it, I had some socks. I'm going to put in a picture here. I'm doing this so I remember to put in the picture. Uh, I had some socks that there was one made with commercial yarn, which is the pink and turquoise one, that I just really didn't like the colour of very much. And the other two were made with hand dyed yarns and they'd really washed out. So I wanted to just freshen them up. And of course, as we've just discussed, freshening up for me means dyeing things black. So this is the commercial one that was turquoise and pink. They're a little bit patchy, but I don't mind. I can live with that. So you can see, I don't know if I've still got the picture on the screen, probably not. I either leave things on the screen for far too long or they just like flash up and disappear. But I'm going to work on it. This was the bright, bright pink. It was my own pattern, just a seed stitch. Um, I, I can't remember if I did it toe up or cuff down. So it's either a flegal heel or a strong heel with a contrast colour back flap and toe. But yeah, so that was turquoise and pink. This one was pinks and purples when it was first knitted, but had just faded to a kind of an all over grey. The pattern for this one is something about Rhinebeck, waiting for Rhinebeck, I think. Not Rhinebeck roomies. They've got cat hairs on them because, of course, I had been wearing them for some months before I did this. Um, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that one. Again, it's a little bit patchy, but I can live with it. Really, really like the way they've come out. And finally, this one, which originally was beige with sort of golds and I think, I don't know if you can make them out, you can kind of see the golds peeking through. You probably can't because the light is awful. I might try and take a picture to show you. What I like about this one is because of the pattern, it's kind of, 
they call it resistance dyeing so it's a bit like tie dye where it was crinkled up let's find a longer one so before it's stretched open it's like that so where it was like that the dye's taken less mm. right heaven help me yeah, this is just rubbish and as predicted the sun's coming out now so there's that kind of it's highlighting the pattern a little bit which was completely accidental but really nice the pattern for this sort sock was woodland walk i think it was olivia villarreal The pattern is not a shorty, I just did a shorty because I had some leftover yarn from another rocket tee. Imagine that, another rocket tee. Um, yeah, so I just did a shorty. But I'm really, really pleased with these ones. So, tried some over dyeing as well. Then I wanted to dye some yarn for that Aurora Cabin shawl. And I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted. So I've done a silvery grey, pale blue, and then I wanted a petrol. And I tried mixing colours to get a petrol and what I got was this, which on the camera looks exactly the colour I wanted and is not that colour in real life. It's not anywhere near that green in real life. How frustrating! So there are you thinking, yeah, she's nailed that. And I can see that I haven't nailed it at all. Darn it. But yeah, let me bring it back over here. No, it still looks petrol blue. How mad. God, that's annoying. Anyway. I need five skeins. I'm going to try for a petrol blue. And then... I don't know what the fifth colour will be. I could do another dark grey. That would go in. I'm going to see. I want to... This is so frustrating that this, this looks the right colour for you. I don't want it to be all cold colours. I want to warm it up a little bit, which is why I wanted the petrol. And I can see, because that looks exactly the colour that I was trying to get on the screen that that would do the job that will warm up this one which on its own is quite an icy blue oh, that's so annoying that's what's most annoying is that I was absolutely right that that was the colour I needed to go with the other two couldn't get it and now it's taunting me by being that colour on the screen yarn gremlins and while I was at it because I do like pink I dyed up this one which is not as fluorescent Let's see. maybe if I make it a bit no that does nothing nothing helpful at all this is not as fluorescent pink as it looks it's not as fluorescent pink as the other one I dyed it's a more purple toned pink this is so frustrating. I'm going to try and take a picture of this as well so you can get the right colour. There are going to be lots of pictures added to this if I remember to do it. So I wanted a pink with kind of an idea that I could put it into the shawl but I probably won't. I think I might go for, if I can get the petrol right, petrol and maybe a dark tealy colour. Um, just to warm up the blues. But I think this might be too much of a contrast. But it will almost certainly go into something else. This is quite variegated. I don't know if you can see. See, that looks white. It's not. It's very, very pale pink. But I just was playing around and trying lots of different techniques and seeing what worked for what result. It's just getting darker and darker, that's what I think. Then, the 
then I tried dyeing some, I wanted some Christmas yarn. And again, I had in my head what I wanted and I couldn't quite make it work. So, I, I dread to think how this is going to come out on the camera. Oh, not too bad. A lot, lot brighter than it actually is. Um, it's not come out quite how I wanted it. The red is more salmony pink than I wanted. And it just looks fluorescent. This is so frustrating. Again, I'll take photographs. Um, the speckles have come out very nicely. If you can see them, I have no idea whether you can or not. Because now I've moved, all I can see is the reflection from the blind. Um, but it's far more salmon toned than I wanted. So I tried again. And all I succeeded in doing was getting pretty much the same thing again, just slightly darker. So, and this is where the interesting thing's going to come in. These, I have discovered, you can open a shop on Kofi. So I'm going to put these into my Kofi shop. They're called Merry and Bright. They are considerably brighter than they were intended to be. Um, but I will try and get some decent photographs so that you can see that's very peachy. Um, but they certainly are bright and hopefully merry. The inspiration, if I don't sound too arty about it, the inspiration was I was watching a podcast by a friend of mine, um, Karen, Recreational Knitting. And she mentioned that she suffers from seasonal affective disorder. And so do I. And my treatment for it, if you like, is colour. So much as I love this sort of thing, if I'm feeling low, I need this sort of thing. And so I was trying to, to dye them. Merry and bright is obviously a reference to Christmas. But also the fact that bright things make me feel merry or happy, if you prefer. So that was kind of my rationale behind those. Didn't go quite according to plan. They're going to be called Merry and Bright 2022 because I'm going to have another go for next year. Once I have a bit more experience with different techniques and can get what I want, I'm having another go. I do like them. They're just not what was in my head. I couldn't get what was in my head. Onto the yarn. I'll get there. And then I tried this one. This one. Again, it is not that bright. It's speckled really nicely. I don't know if you, how well you can see that. Speckled exactly the way I wanted it. What it did not do is have an even tone. And I realise now that it's because of the technique I used to dye it. So this is also going to go into the shop. It's got sort of paler. No, you can't see that because it all the colour it looks on the screen is the colour it was meant to be, and it's not that colour. These were going to be for Dave for Christmas for socks. Oh, you can see a bit of the variegation there. Um, so this one is going to go into the Kofi shop. And this is called Bad Santa. Because it did not come out as it was meant to. There will be a link down below to the Kofi shop. Um, I think, if you can't access the links, I think if you search Kofi or Mouse's Makes, Kofi, I can't remember which way around it is. Um, it should take you to my page, and then on my page you should be able to see how to get into the shop, I think. That, I think, is everything that I had to tell you, apart from... I found a new podcast the other day, 
and I was really impressed. It's two girls, I think they're sisters, they may even be twins, they look very much alike. They're called Bella and Cello and the podcast is called The Knitworthy Podcast. They are just adorable. There was some knitting, some crochet and they talk about books. Um, obviously being younger, they're talking about adult, not adult, the opposite of adult, young, young adult, is that what I mean? Books for teenagers, that's young adult isn't it? Yeah. And they've also been reading some classics and kudos to them because I can't be doing with the classics. I was made to read them at school and I think it ruined me for classics forever. We did Brighton Rock, it's just a miserable, miserable book. Um, what the other one was it's about an old boy who takes his boat to rescue soldiers from the beaches at Dunkirk I can't think what it's called it's quite it's like a short novella um, and we did a Shakespeare and I enjoyed it so little I don't remember what it was. It wasn't Romeo and Juliet, I don't think. And I, I quite like Shakespeare. So it was that much torture that I can't remember which one it was. Peter did Romeo and Juliet, I'm sure. So I, I don't think we did. Doesn't matter. It kind of ruined me for the classics. But they're talking about Wuthering Heights that they've just read. And I can't remember what the other one was. But they're really fantastic podcast is only just over 20 minutes long. If you've got a spare 20 minutes, go and check them out. They're quite impressive young ladies, honestly. Um, and we need that in the knitting community. We need the youngers. Youngers? Who am I? Youngsters. <laughs> we need them to be coming in and enjoying it as much as we do to keep our, our passion alive. So, yeah. If you get a chance, go check them out. Right, I'm up to nearly 40 minutes. The weather has changed almost twice because I can see another a shower coming. So it's probably time that I went and prepared myself for the descent of my friend upon my person. Um, and I will hopefully see you next week. I am recording this earlier than normal. Because, as I mentioned last week, I'm getting double jabbed. And I don't know how I'm going to feel after that. My immune system is kind of a law to itself. It might take no notice. It might put me in bed for a week. It's like Russian roulette. Nobody knows. So, I may see you next week. I might not. I probably will. Shouldn't worry too much. So, if I'm not around next week, you'll know why. I did say that last week, and yet here I am. I'm rambling now. I do this. Have you noticed? I do this when it comes to the end of every podcast. And there are two reasons. One, I feel like I'm chatting with friends, which is nonsense because I'm sat here on my own. And I don't really want to go. And the other thing is, I'm frantically running through my brain. Have I forgotten anything? Have I forgotten anything? Because you can bet that the minute I stop or about half an hour later, I think, oh, I meant to say such and such. And I've forgotten about it. But I've checked my list. Like Father Christmas, I'm making a list and I've checked it twice. And if there's anybody naughty or nice around here, I've got a feeling it's probably me. Or you. She doesn't believe she could possibly be naughty. I know different. So I am definitely going to go. And I will probably see you next week. And until then, stay safe. Hope the weather's a bit kinder to you than it is being to us and happy knitting. Bye everyone.